All right, we're back here at the big box store. Today, I'm gonna to show you a soil mix I've been using for a few years now. It's only three ingredients. That's it, three ingredients, maybe four. That you, all of these ingredients you could get at a, any big box store. And this is a special container soil mix that I've been using for avocados, mangoes, citrus, guavas, chilies, basically any tropical, subtropical plants. It's specifically designed to hold water, but also provide excellent drainage this is designed for people who want to grow tropicals and subtropical fruit trees in hot dry climates like ours southern california zone 10. you know we've had epic rains probably some of the greatest rains that in the recent memory but we're heading into our dry months and i'm looking forward to the future and i'm want to plant some new things in this container mix so that it could set them up for success to grow right and to avoid rot and to avoid problems down the line all right Let's go look at some of the ingredients, come on. All right, here's the first thing we're gonna get, peat moss. Love it, I'm gonna get a big thing of this. Next ingredient, perlite. You need this, good stuff. Improves drainage and aeration, very important. Let's get a bag of perlite, all right. All right, when you come to the big box store, this is where you're, where you're gonna walk in, you're gonna see, we're here in the nursery section, look at these, brightly colored bags they have really nice words on them organic plus all natural garden soil container mix these buzzwords are really nice and attractive these bags are really brightly colored they're green you're going to want to your instinct tells you to buy them but there's some problems with them and let's look at the ingredients of some of these and see why it might be a problem planting them using planting plants in them all right here's one here's the ingredients here Sphagnum peat moss, that's okay, that's good. Processed forest products, mm. nope. Arbor fines, nope. Perlite, good. Organic fertilizer, maybe. And dolomite lime, hmm, okay, interesting. Here's the thing, arbor fines, recycled forest products, that usually means wood chips. And that can be a problem. Actually, if you plant your plants, some trees in there, they're gonna look okay. They're gonna probably look okay for about six months to a year. And then you'll notice your trees start to decline. Some trees are more sensitive to that than others. Avocado trees for one are really sensitive to having organic matter mixed in where the roots are. I get a lot of emails, a lot of people send me pictures of their avocado tree and their tree is struggling. And usually I ask them, the first question I ask them is what they planted their tree in. And then we can go from there. So what happens? You get that, those brightly colored bags of soil, you plant your trees in them. What happens is as you start to water, water the pots, that soil begins to rot. The organic matter in that soil begins to rot. And as it rots, it steals oxygen from the roots. The roots of the tree need oxygen to breathe just like we do. And then the rot happens slowly. So that's why I said six months to a year, your tree starts to decline. And that's when it starts to go down. And it's really sad to see a tree lose its health and start to go down. It's sad to watch. So this soil that I'm going to show you today, you're not going to have that problem. There's not going to be any problem with rot. All right. So let's get into it. By the way, all, all the stuff I learned it from Gary Matsuoka. All the credit goes to him. Shout out to Gary Matsuoka. Check out his YouTube channel. Awesome YouTube channel. I just wanted to give him props for this because he taught me all this stuff. All right. All right, so we got our ingredients here. We got the peat moss, we got the perlite, and then the last ingredient is our old friend, DG, decomposed granite. I love this stuff, it's so versatile. This stuff, plants have been growing in this material for millions and millions of years, and humans came along and we thought we were so smart by planting stuff in bat guano and worm composting and aged arbor finds. That stuff is not natural to plants, they're not used to growing in it. They are used to growing in DG. This is basically just crushed up rocks. It's crushed up earth. And whenever I'm in doubt, I plant stuff in DG because I know there'll be no problems at all. All right. So the peat moss provides water retention and acidic conditions that most tropicals and subtropicals like. The perlite is basically a crushed up rock, just like decomposed granite, but it's been heated up and then, then it provides really, really good drainage. And then the decomposed granite is all around fantastic soil medium to use. It's just, like I said earlier, it's just crushed up rock. It holds water much better than sand, much, much better than sand. 
and that's why I prefer to use it over sand in this mix. By the way, a lot of people like to use paver sand or sand that has no salt in it. I no longer recommend that. I don't use it personally. I don't use sand in my container mixes anymore for one reason. It simply just drains too fast. You have to keep watering and the drainage is just a little too good. Sand is a great medium to use. You can use sand if you live in a space where it rains a lot or you have access to a lot of water. But in general for us here, uh, we're a little bit drier, so I'd no longer recommend using sand in, our, in a situation like ours, all right? I'm gonna get really scientific here, all right? Check out how scientific I get. We're gonna do our measurement. The measurement is handfuls, okay? Not weight. We're not measuring by weight because DG is so much heavier than peat moss. So there it is, just handfuls. I'll put handful, there's three, and then here's another handful, four. Now we'll go to handfuls of DG. There's a handful of DG. Another big handful. Another one. There, four handfuls. So the ratio is however much peat moss and DG you put, you put half per light. So we did four handfuls of peat moss, four handfuls of decomposed granite. So I'll do two handfuls of perlite. And that's it. Don't overthink it, all right? Don't overthink it. It's very simple. Now I'm gonna mix it together. Mix it together by hand. Nice and mixed up. Make sure they come together. We're breaking up any clumps. Don't want any clumps. And here it is. Here's the finished product. That's what it looks like. Nothing that's going to rot. Nothing that's going to harm your plants. And it's so versatile. So useful. Okay. The reason why I said four ingredients in the beginning of the video, there's one more thing I like to add to this. This is something else that I learned from Gary Matsuoka, mycorrhiza. He said it's the king of the garden. It's the most important aspect of your garden. This mix has no organic matter in it, so there's no mycorrhiza in it. So what I like to do is I like to add it and I'll show you what I have. Come on. This is mycorrhiza fungus. You just take a little bit of this and you can mix it into that soil. If you can't find this, this is kind of hard to find. You have to go to a specialty store, maybe a hydroponic store. Most fertilizers have mycorrhiza in it. If you, here's a common fertilizer you can get anywhere, including the big box store. If you look at the back, there it says mycorrhiza. It has a lot of it in there. So you can add this on top of the, on top of the mix. But if you have this, you can mix it right into the soil. That's why I like to use this because I can mix it right in. But this stuff, you, you would add it like any of the fertilizer, you would put it on top, top of the soil. All right, let's go add some of this. So what does mycorrhiza do? It transmits nutrients and water to the roots. Scientists did a study, apparently 80% of the roots is actually mycorrhiza. It's a beneficial fungus that has a symbiotic relationship with the roots of all plants. And it gives nutrients and plants need it. They gotta have it, all right? Some plants actually don't, but most fruit trees, like the ones we're working with, they need mycorrhiza. For this one, I'll just put a few capfuls in there. Four small little capfuls, and that's it. So the ratio I do is four little capfuls, which is probably a teaspoon, because I put four handfuls of the DG and four handfuls of the peat moss. I'm mixing it in again. By the way, this mycorrhiza is very powerful. You don't need too much of it, all right? Very strong, very effective. Today I'll transfer this little avocado seedling into a container. I grew it from the classic three toothpicks and a cup of water method. Let me take it out and show you the root. Look at the roots. Got good root development, got a little sprout going. That's how I know it's time to go in soil. Let me take the toothpicks off. 
All right. I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to start putting soil into it. Keep it up, keep it stabilized, keep it near the top of the pot. And there we go. Cover the seed a little bit. And now we just add water. We're done. Now we're adding water. And we'll let it drain. Oh, it's already starting to drain. See the water coming out from the bottom of the pot? You want drainage. That's important. Gotta have drainage. Okay, I'll keep that in the shade for a few weeks. Once it grows more, we'll move it gradually into partial sun and then full sun. All right, guys, there's a the soil. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know how your plants are doing. And as always, thank you for watching.